Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Cap at Home in our summer chill with art session. My name is Miss Allie and today we're going to be learning about artist Keith Haring and making these Keith Haring inspired 3D drawings. So it's really cool. It's actually drawing, just cutting and drawing today, um, but we're going to use up simple material to make it sort of pop up and stand off the page. So that's what makes it 3D. Really easy, really fun, and you get to learn about a really cool artist today. So let me switch over to my drawing board and we can get started. So as I am setting up my drawing board here, I want to take a second to give a shout out to not only um, our friends at the College for Creative Studies, but also our friends over at General Motors for allowing us to keep making these free online art tutorials every week. So again, thank you for joining me again today. And we are going to get started. So first we need to gather our materials to make these really cool 3D drawings. So we need a few things. Um, we are going to need some paper. You're going to actually need two pieces of paper. So I had some colors here. Um, I chose some two contrasting colors. So two colors so I know what stand out next to each other. Yellow and this kind of teal blue. You can choose any colors you want. Um, one of them can even be white if you wish. Um, you're also going to need pencil and eraser, um, and we're going to need some sort of black marker, some scissors, and then some sort of glue, whether it's glue stick or Elmer's glue or hot glue, and then either some, um, some little cardboard pieces or some packing peanuts, and I'll show you what we'll use those for. And then something that you can also use is a Keith Haring template. Um, if you want to print those out, you can, which I'll show you those in a minute here um, but you can also just kind of follow along with me today all right let's get started making our cool 3d drawing so um, this is our end goal now Keith Haring was a popular artist in New York in the 80s he created a lot of colorful works and iconic images such as the radiant baby and barking dog if you ever look up his work you'll see some of those images I have some here um, some of his popular ones. This is the dog that I was just talking about. Um, he also responded to contemporary and social and political events, um, including hardships of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and he started off by drawing in New York subway stations, kind of filling up empty spaces with chalk drawings, um, aiming to make art accessible to everyone. So that's kind of cool to think about. That was his goal. So, we are going to create an inspired work by his. So first thing we need to do is choose what our um, base color is going to be. Now I'm going to choose that my yellow one is my background piece and this one is going to be the, my teal color is going to be the piece that the figure is actually on. So um, I'm going to set my yellow one aside. I'm going to work on this one. Now what I want to do first is actually draw out a... Um, what I actually want to do is draw out a figure. So I did print out a few examples of figures that he does use. Like in my example, my first example um, here, I use this figure. You can print and cut them out. He also does figures like this, these sort of funky dancing figures. Um, and here's a couple other examples like standing, arms up. Um, so you can kind of choose what you want to do. And you can print them out and cut them out to trace them. Um, so you could do that. I had these two already printed and cut out so I could just trace them if I wanted. Um, and I usually kind of trace them towards the bottom of the page so that it's easier and um, take doesn't take up as much space. Now, if you're like me and you have a bunch of things on your table, you might have just lost your pencil. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. So you can just go ahead and trace this. Um, another thing that you can do, another trick to drawing Keith Haring people, is like drawing a stick figure. So I'm going to draw this kind of darkly so you can hopefully see it, and I'll go over it in marker. So you can start with sort of a round head and then just do like a stick figure of the design you want to do. So maybe you can't print it out, you don't have access to a printer, but that's okay. Maybe you want to draw this one. So I'm going to draw sort of a stick figure, and I know this is sort of what I want it to look like. 
So then I could go ahead and hopefully you'll be able to see that. And I can actually trace that over sort of like you're doing bubble letters with my black marker. So I'm sort of tracing that without um, without tracing those exact lines. It's sort of more like outlining it. Okay, so I have my figure here. This is my Keith Haring figure, and that looks pretty close. And I could go ahead and erase those pencil marks. That's the benefit of not um, pressing so hard when you're drawing with pencil. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this guy out. So I'm going to take my scissors cut this out. Like I said, you can use any color for this. I like to choose contrasting colors. Now contrasting colors can be colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So stuff that is bright. So you could choose, you know, like green and red. Um, you can choose blue and orange. Uh, you could do yellow and purple, or you could just do bright versus dark colors. So if you have a cool color, so one of the cool colors, blue, um, green, purple, and then you have a warm color on top of it, yellow, orange, uh, or red, that would be good. If you want to use like red and white, that always stands out really good. Whatever color combination you'd like to use. And I'm just cutting, and I'm being really careful to like cut around my lines because I'm not actually trying to cut the line off. Because I want, I'm actually going to want to use the black line. And so if you get too close, it's no big deal. I know I'm going to have to actually go over this a little bit, but that's okay. And notice that I'm taking my time to cut this out. I'm not in a hurry because I'm trying not to, you know, cut off any limbs or anything. And I liked this one, my sort of like standing pose with arms up, but he has so many poses. You can actually, if you're trying to figure out what you want to do, you can actually go onto Google and just type in Keith Haring um, person template, and then you'll be able to see them all. So you can set your scraps aside, and I have a scrap paper underneath here, so I might actually just go ahead and re-outline this, make it neater. Make sure my black line is nice and bold. Having a scrap paper or something under your workspace is always a good idea. So you're not getting your table or whatever you're drawing on messy. It's summer. It's always a good uh, time to work outside. Okay. So like I said, just kind of re-outlining this to make, I know the, the hands and feet always get a little more difficult when you're cutting a smaller thing. And the head, trying to make a round head is always difficult, no matter how old you are. Okay, there we go. Here's our person. And so what I'm going to do is actually just take um, a piece of... This is just masking tape, and this is just gonna, this is just temporary, okay? So I took my masking tape, I'm gonna flip my person over, I'm just gonna stick them there. I'm gonna take my background color, and I'm gonna kind of stick them temporarily right in the middle here. And there's a reason why we'll do that. That looks pretty even, that looks pretty center in the middle here. And I'll put all my people aside my scraps. So now what we want to do is start adding things around us. So I brought, I printed out some examples, the fun world of Keith Haring. And what we're going to do is start adding movement lines and lines around our person. So, and just sort of filling up this background space here. Now, when I see movement lines, if you see like around some of these people, there's like these little lines that sort of make like your limbs, like your arms and legs look like they're moving. So those are called movement lines. So we can start to add those in. That's always the first thing I add in. So something I might do, you know, something over here, or maybe I even add these sort of triangles. You can kind of do and feel out, maybe you are like, this makes sense there, 
or here or maybe you want to make it so it's like almost on something okay He always has these little lines above his head. So these are like our movement lines. So this is sort of what our start is. And then we want to take, you know, then we want to start filling up the rest of our page. All of these pages are totally full. And you can do this with simple designs or simple like symbols, like circles, hearts, stars, um, you know, these little music notes, triangles. Um, you can also do this with other little characters. He draws, he, you know, the dog. There's this hot dog that appears sometimes. Um, the, there's like sometimes little butterflies or symbols like a TV or a light bulb um, or, you know, figure on a skateboard or a little robot. Those are all things that he does and incorporates. You can draw another little person if you want. Um, some of his other pieces, you know, are a lot more full. This sort of looks like an alien spaceship to me or like an eye. So it can be totally what you want to fill it up with. So it, essentially all basic lines and shapes. Um, and different things that he does. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to try and fill up our space. So I'm just going to go ahead and I went along and started to draw a few things. And I sort of, I don't know, I was thinking this was like a cloud or something or maybe it's a road. Um, and so you sort of just kind of go with it. You're like, oh, that's maybe what this started to look like. Maybe I'll make it look like it has wheels now. Maybe it's multiple cars. And you can also just do like some shapes. Maybe he's listening to some music up here. You can do something like that. Like I said, he does a lot of stars. Um, and you'll see this heart a lot. And you can sort of do like what your own instincts are too. And you can make things overlap or go in different directions. Um, I might do something like this. So this is the fun part. This is sort of where we can take time to just relax, fill the space up in any way that we see fit. And so I'm going to sort of draw a few of the things that I notice um, in his work. So this also is a good time to like observe things that you notice. Um, that's the kind of the cool thing about his work is that you can also look at it and we all might notice different things. Um, I know he draws, oh, like I said, he sort of draws this. Let's see. And you can, it doesn't even have to be something that he draws. It could be something that you wanted to draw on here. This is what I, his little, like, spaceship. And you can do some thick lines and some thin lines, and you can do lines in between other lines. You can do dots, you can do zigzags or swirls, and you're sort of just filling up the space the best that you can. This is sort of how he does this hot dog that appears sometimes. And then it always is like surrounded by these lines, which I think is really funny. So I'm going to draw a hot dog here. Um, let's see, what else could I draw? Um, there's lots of stars everywhere. And he also just does lots of like lines going in different directions, you know. So if you just want to use a lot of lines and fill up your space like that, that's also fine. And see how I'm kind of moving around my, my person. So I know that, you know, I'm trying to move and incorporate movement. And so movement showing movement lines. Sometimes he also draws like a clock. So that can be sometimes in different places. Um, so like I said, you can sort of just go with it. I know sometimes he draws a robot, like in some of his stuff. And so this is also a good time to like look up, 
maybe some of what he does. And even if stuff sort of overlaps, that's okay. That's sort of his, his robot. And that's okay. It can go off the page, too, and that works great. You're sort of just trying to fill up the space the best you can. Um, any sort of squiggles, other designs, lines, patterns. Um, so it's sort of like testing your brain to see, like, okay, what can go here? It's sort of like a light bulb. You could do, like, lightning. And I have just sort of this big black marker, but you can use whatever you have or want to. So anyway, so that's what you're basically doing is filling up the space any way that you can. And I like to try and choose and pick some of the things that he uses his lines and patterns. So that takes up a good amount of time. So whenever you fill this in, now I could keep going, but for the sake of time, let's say that I've totally filled this in. What I actually want to do is add some patterns and designs on my person. So some things that you can do, you know, you can actually add a face on your person. You can leave it blank. You can just add some patterns on it. You can do it however you'd like it to do, um, or however you'd like to. So I know one in my one example I had, let me find it again, I have a bunch of papers. In this example, this is what mine looked like. I did more of an abstract one. Maybe in this one, I saw one of his um, examples had sort of like a face that I thought was silly. So let's do that. He had sort of like these, these big, he had two mouths, and I thought that was really funny. Um... And you can do something as simple or as um, intricate as you want um, inside to kind of fill that space up. And I always sort of do something like this. You know, something simple that kind of just shows where the lines are going. However you want to do it, though, there's no, no right or wrong way to do so. And they don't even have to be the same on both sides. Okay, so let's say, let's say I like how this looks. You can always add in little details around certain, you know, parts of your image. Okay, so I'm like, okay, cool. So what I want to do is take my little guy up. Like I said, it's temporary, and you can kind of see where my, um, where our little friend was. So what I want to do now is actually glue a couple pieces of cardboard, um, cardboard scraps, or if you have, like, packing peanuts, you can do that. Um, so I'm just going to add a little glue on there where I want them to go. And I try and do, you know, like, let's say I have one here. And let glue, Elmer's glue. I actually have hot glue in my hand right now solely for time. Because if you're using Elmer's glue, you want to make sure that you give your little person enough time to dry. And I always try and get the, you know, the edges or the corners. So, you know, your hands, your feet, that type of thing. And, like, these are just sort of, like, two scrap pieces of cardboard glued together. You can also use, like I said, packing peanuts can be really fun. Okay, so I have them on all the edges. Now I'm going to glue the other part of them. And I always kind of start with the half part of it first. Figure out where it went. Sort of line it up the best I can to where it was before. 
that looks about right. And I'm going to place it down. And whatever parts I didn't glue before, I can add those down. And so that way it stands up. This is what makes it 3D. Like I said, I'm only using hot glue for the sake of time. If you choose to use hot glue, make sure you ask for help from an adult. Um, now, if you're using Elmer's glue, you want to give this time to dry. Um, and now that I can see where it's standing out, I can say, okay, I would, you know, I want to add something else here. You know, in this space, you know, you can figure out what other spaces you need to fill up. Okay? So that is basically how it's 3D. And then it, that way, it stands up, which is really cool. You kind of have a drawing that's sticking up off of your page like this. Another thing you can do that's optional, I ended up putting this on another piece of black paper to make it stand out more. That's what I chose to do, but you definitely don't have to do that. So that is how you make a Keith Haring 3D drawing. So you're basically starting with drawing your figure, cutting it out, adding some designs in the background, filling up a few on the person, and making sure gluing it on cardboard or styrofoam or something to make it stand up. And once you're done with your fabulous drawing, then you can show it off to your friends and family and tell them what you learned about Keith Haring. Make sure you check out his work. Um, he, he did make very um, interesting work, so make sure you try and check that out. Thank you for joining me again on Cap at Home. My name is Miss Allie, and today we made these Keith Haring 3D drawings. Make sure to check out the rest of our Cap at Home uh, projects every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 1 p.m., on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and you can also find the rest of our videos there. Thanks for hanging out with me again, and I'll see you next week.